the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Good day, my dear students at home. I'm Abbas Shehu, your usual commerce teacher. Today, we are going to look at the topic known as a banking system. If you remember, in our last class, we started talking about uh, money, where we defined what money is, the evolution of money. We talk about uh, trade by barter and problems associated with it. And we talk about, again, the functions of money, qualities of money, and lastly, forms of money. Money, money, money. Today we are going to look at a very important aspect that has to do with money, which is banking system. When you have money, you need to keep the money somewhere that the money will be safe. And that is what, we, that, that was, that is, what is taking us to the issue of uh, the topic known as banking system. Under this topic, we intend to look at the following items. Number one, we'll look at meaning of bank. Two, origin of bank. Three, types of banks. Four, commercial banks. Five, characteristics of commercial banks. Six, functions of commercial banks. Then lastly, which is seven, roles of commercial banks banks in international trade. We'll summarize and then give you assignment as usual. Now the first one is which is the meaning of bank. We want to look at what a bank means. A bank is a place where money and other valuables are kept for safe custody. It's a place where money and other valuables are kept for safe custody. Now, we talk about money and other valuables. It means that we are not only talking about money, we are not only, we are not only talking about keeping money, or we are talking about bank. We are talking about keeping money and other things that are valuable. Things like what? Things like jewelry. Things like certificate. Things like will. So on and so forth. It is a commercial institution that performs various financial activities such as accepting deposits and granting of credit facilities in, in forms of loans and overdrafts. So a bank is a financial institution that is known for primarily two things, accepting deposits and granting of credits in terms of loans and Overdraft. That's talking about what we mean by a bank. Now, after saying what we mean by a bank, the next thing we are going to, do, to look at is uh, origin of bank. When we talk about evolution of money in our last class, we talk about indirectly the origin of bank because you cannot talk about evolution of money without talking about origin of bank. They are closely related. And if you remember, in our last class, we talked about the origin of all evolution of money dated back to the 17th century. And, at, and that it originated from England through the activities of goldsmiths. That's what we mentioned at that or in that class. Now we said the origin of bank is traced back to the evolution of money in London in the 17th century. The goldsmith had facilities for storing valuables. Goldsmith at that time 
had facilities for storing valuables. People that were merchants carry, used to carry their valuables in terms of gold for safekeeping with the goldsmith. We know, we know what a goldsmith is. We know what he does. He is in charge of uh, heating metals, putting them into good shape. So people that at that time trusted him and they were carrying their valuable things to him for safekeeping. And that's how the issue of banking started. Because if you remember, we said in our definition of bank is a place where money and other valuables are kept. So people were keeping their valuable things there because of the trust they have with in him. Because of self-custody, they were keeping their valuables there. Trusting in him that whenever they go to collect, he was always there to give. So the government had facilities for storing valuables and therefore accepted them from merchants for safekeeping. He started by demanding for charges for such service. First, when, when, goods, when the variables are brought to him for self-custody, he started by asking those that, uh, those that were bringing those variables to pay for keeping such variables for them. And that's why the issue of charges or bank charges started. Later, started to offer receipts to those that were giving their valuables with, with him. Started to give them a receipt that will show, that will serve as evidence of keeping or depositing their valuables with him. And later, we, like we have said in our last class during the time of, during the time we are talking about evolution of money, the receipts were later used as paper money, as banknotes. So, these receipts were used as means of exchange for goods and services. It later developed into the use of bank notes. Then came the idea of granting such deposits to people in need with, in need with interest charge. Now, what are we saying here? The gospel came to realize that People were keeping their valuables with him. And they keep those valuables sometimes for a long period of time before collection. Now he started to give out those valuables to people that were in need and started charging them interest. And that's why today in our, normal, in, in our modern banking system, you will see banks using deposit of other people to give it out as loans to other people. Charging interest. And that's what was done in that time. In the 17th century, in England, like, like we said, through the goldsmith. That's talking about the origin of bank. That's how we have bank that we are having today. I we talk about the origin of bank, we now move to types of banks. There are several types of banks. Different types of banks. We only have seven here, but there are more than seven. Therefore, this list is not exhausted. Number one, we have what is known as commercial banks. Then we have central bank, number two. Number two, we have what is known as major bank. We have saving bank, development bank, mortgage bank, agricultural bank. Like I said earlier on, the list here, is not exhausted. There are several other banks. For our purpose of this class, we are going to concentrate on the commercial banks. Commercial banks. We will look at what commercial banks are. We will look at their functions or role, so on and so forth. Now, what are commercial banks? Commercial banks are financial institutions, just like other banks which accepts deposits and other valuables from the public for safekeeping with the sole aim of making profit. That's why they are known as commercial banks. They are out to make profit. Their motive 
is profit making. They are usually owned by private individuals or government. They are usually owned by private individuals or government. We will come, we will look at, we will come to look at the characteristics of our commercial bank, and we will talk more about that. But before then, let's look at uh -huh. we are already we are already here. We have the characteristics of commercial banks. Number one, they are limited liability companies. Remember, in, in one of our one of our classes. We talk about forms of business. Why well, we talk about limited liability companies. Commercial banks are limited liability companies. They are companies that are formed to make money. Different individuals come together, put their resources together to carry out banking business. And at the end of the day, whatever they realize as profit is shared among them. So they are limited liability companies. Number two, their motive of formation is profit making. They are profit oriented. Uh, their motive is to make profit. Not only making profit, to maximize profit. Number three, they are members of the money market. We have different types of market. We have what is known as commodity market, money market. Therefore, commercial banks are part of what is known as money market. Number four, they are incorporated. They, before they are allowed to cooperate, as to operate as a business, they must be registered. And as a limited liability company, they must register with a register of companies. They must be given licenses to operate. Number five, they are known for accepting deposits and other valuables. They are known for accepting deposits and other values. In fact, it is their primary function. Now, let's talk about uh, characteristics of uh, commercial banks. Now, let's look at functions of commercial banks. Some functions of commercial banks. Number one, accepting deposits. It is the duty and responsibility of banks to accept deposits. Once a customer takes money to them for self-keeping, it is their duty to accept and keep. It is their duty to accept not only the uh, money, but other valuables, like we have mentioned, like we have just mentioned, in terms of valuables, like uh, gold or jewelry, will, documents, so on and so forth. It is none of their business to ask, start asking you where did we get this or that. Their all is to accept whatever you have taken to them for self-keeping. Number two, lending to customers. They lend to customers. Lending of money to customers in terms of loans, in terms of overdrafts. And we have been saying it in this class over and over what bank loan is, what a bank overdraft is. Number three, they serve as agents of Payment. They pay money on behalf of their customers. A customer may buy a particular thing and ask his bank to pay. A customer can equally ask the bank or give the bank what is known as standing order for them to be paying a particular amount of money at intervals, at regular intervals. Number four, they are known for keeping of valuables, safe keeping of valuables. You are taking your money. To them, you are taking your valuables to them because you want your money, your valuables to be safe. You are taking them for safe keeping, and once you take them there for safe keeping, the bank must make sure that they are safe. Even if something happens, something bad happens, it is none of your business. They are the ones that will find a way of giving you whatever you have taken to them as deposits. Number five, issuance of a bank statement. It is the function to issue you as a customer a financial statement that will show the relationship, the financial relationship between you and them. What is there as your balance? What has been deposited? What has been withdrawn? What and what and what transact between the two of you must be given to you as a bank statement. Seven, which is another function, 
function of investment and stock exchange. Investment and stock exchange. This is talking about where the bank serve in terms of serve you as a customer in terms of investing your money in a business to the stock exchange. They can buy you shares. They can invest your money, but through buying shares on your behalf. Shares that will be from time to time they bring you money to you. They equally it from the function of insurance of travelers check. Insurance of travelers take check. This is talking about where people travel across the borders, internationally, abroad. Before you go travel abroad, you can go to any commercial bank and obtain traveler's check. That will give you the opportunity of using the money that you are going to meet there, the currency of that country, to transact whatever you want to do as a foreigner in that particular land. Number nine, foreign exchange transactions. They involve in foreign exchange transactions, providing you with foreign currencies, selling foreign currencies to their customers. People that are engaged, people that are interested or are willing or, or going abroad can go and obtain the currencies of those countries so that when they go there, they use the money to buy whatever they want to buy. Number 10, provision of financial advice. Commercial banks offer financial advice to their customers. Give them advice to do with finance, to do with how they go about managing their finance. Number 11, they facilitate international trade. Commercial banks play a very vital role in terms of facilitating international trade. You know, we have talked about international trade in this class, in our, one of our classes. Talk about what it is. Talk about even means of payment in international trade. And of course, bank is the one leading how you can make payment when you are buying and selling internationally. Twelve, they act as executor for their customers. They act as executor for their customers. Then we go to rows, rows of commercial banks in international trade. Rows of commercial banks in international trade. Commercial banks, just like we said, play a very, very important role in terms of promoting the buying and selling between countries. Buying and selling of goods and services amongst countries. Since they play this role, then it's good for us to see how they play this role, how they do that in order to facilitate international trade. Number one, they do what is known as discounting of documentary credits. Discounting of documentary credits. Number two, they add as reference, uh, uh, reference to customers, they ask, they add as reference to customers or reference to customers. Number three, they help in give, giving out what you call foreign exchange. They help in give, providing foreign exchange transactions by providing foreign exchange. Of course, they, they equally issue out what is known as a traveler's check. And number five, of course, they minimize what is known as default impairment. Then number six, they, there, is also, there is also the role of 
providing documentary credits. These are the roles played by commercial banks in terms of uh, international trade. In terms of international trade. Now, before we go, let's quickly look at uh, what we have been able to discuss as far as this class is concerned. From the beginning, we were able to talk about what we mean by a bank. And we said it's bank is simple, it's as simple as ABCD. It is just a place where money and other valuables are kept for safe custody, for the purpose of safety. And we say it is a financial institution. It is a financial institution that is known for two major things, accepting deposit as well as granting credit facilities. So we talk about origin of bank, where we said a bank is originated in the 17th century in England through the work of goldsmiths who were known at that time for heating metals. And then, of course, keep it, keep it there in shape for different people. That's what they started. They started with that job. And then later on, people started to keep their variables with them. From there, they started to give receipts. From there, the variable checks with them were now used to give uh, to, as credits. They were used in terms of giving it out to those in need as credits. And of course, the, the goldsmiths were charging interest for loans given, for those things that were given. That's how the issue of banking came into being. Now we talk about types of banks. We say we have uh, commercial banks. We have the central bank. The central bank is a bank that is known as Bankers Bank. It is a gov it is a gov it is a bank that belongs to the federal government, and each country has a central bank that coordinates the activities of all other banks. Then we have the major banks. We have, of course, the saving bank, development bank, mortgage bank, agricultural bank. And we say our main concern is commercial banks, commercial banks. And we gave, we gave you a, we, we have said, we have given you what commercial banks are, where we say they are financial institutions which are safe deposits and other valuables from the public for safekeeping. There are several banks that are under commercial banks. We have we have uh, First Bank Nigerian PLC. We have. Uh, Union Bank, Nigerian PLC, Guaranteed Trust Bank, Nigerian PLC, so on and so forth. All these are examples of commercial banks. Now we talk about characteristics of banks. We say they are, they are limited liability companies. They, they are profit oriented. They are members of the money market. They are incorporated. They are known for accepting deposits and other valuables. So now we talk about functions of a commercial bank. And we, say, we, we say the functions are accepting deposits, lending to customers, they act as agents of payments, they are known for self keeping uh, self keeping of valuables, they issue out bank statements, they are in known also for investment and stock exchange, they issue travelers' check, they facilitate foreign exchange for foreign transactions, they provide financial advice to their customers. They facilitate international trade and they ask as executor for their customers. That's all we have been talking about from the beginning of this class to this particular moment. Now we go to the assignment segment, which will be the end of our class. We have only three questions here for you to answer as usual. Answer them and send them to us through our numbers. One, explain any five functions of a commercial bank. Explain any five functions of a commercial bank. Two, list and explain, list, sorry, list any five types of banks and explain any one of them. List any five types of banks 
and explain any one of them. Number three, the last one, mention any four characteristics of a commercial bank. Mention any characteristics of commercial banks. But for your reference purpose, you can contact this, these books. Number one, you can contact essential commerce for senior secondary schools by OA Longe. And you can equally contact comprehensive commerce for senior secondary schools by JU and Yale. For your assignment, you can submit through these numbers about Shehu on 081-001275508. Again, about Shehu on 081-001275508. And then here is the career on 086-569-4134. Here is the career on 086-569-4134. Stay safe. Keep learning. Thank you very much. See you in our next class.